Thank you for coming in to watch one more video with me. My name is Leo Keris, Dr. Leo. I am a dentist here in the United States. I'm a, I was a dentist in Brazil first, then I became a dentist in the United States. I've been doing this, uh, learning about how to become a dentist here for over 10 years since um, back in 2009 when I first spent some time at uh, UNC Chapel Hill. And since then, I've been reading, studying, talking to people, doing it myself, and I have helped many, many, many Brazilian dentists in their pathway. And now I am translating pretty much all of my videos one by one because most people, unfortunately, don't speak Portuguese. So I'm translating one by one and bringing this to you in English. Before we start, this is going to be a question of the day again, like several of my videos. But before we start, go ahead, like the video, share with your friends. Just maybe, maybe share with two or three friends that want to do the same thing that you're doing. It's going to help me out to bring more content to you and uh, quality content, not just, you know, stuff that's not used. Quality content that's going to help you on your path to succeed. The question of the day is this. Hey Leo, is it true that it's much harder to get into a specialty program compared to the best standings program? And I'm gonna answer but right after this. All right, here we go, let's dive right in. So yes, the short answer is yes, it is harder for you to get accepted into a specialty compared to advanced standings. And uh, if you if you are brand new to this whole process, when I say advanced standings means a DDS or DMD program for internationally trained dentists. If you don't know what that is, you gotta go back to my first videos in English. You're gonna understand more about that. So I'm just gonna say advanced standings program, okay? And the other ones gonna be specialty programs, which includes the specialties and also as an add-on the GPRs and AEGDs, which technically they're not specialties, but they are what we call grad programs. So uh, to answer your question, yes, it is much harder to get into a grad program, specialty program compared to advanced statics. And there are, in my opinion, two main reasons why. And I'm gonna break down into these two different reasons so you can understand uh, really well. Reason number one, basically you have to think about the numbers. You have to think about the numbers. When you look at the advanced standing programs, you have over a thousand 1,000 spots available every single year in the United States. Now, when you're talking about specialty programs, whether it's orthodontics, prosthodontics, pediatric dentistry, or maxillofacial surgery, whatever other specialty, health endodontics, you have way less than 1,000 spots for a specialty. So the number of spots available in advanced standings compared to specialty programs, it's significantly different. And basically, the odds are on your side if you have more spots available. There are some schools that are going to take about 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 80 internationally trained dentists to their advanced studying programs. If you think about specialty, the vast majority of specialty programs out there, they're going to take four to six people. Yes, there are some exceptions to the rule, but the vast majority of them will take four to six people. Some programs will take one person. Some programs will take two people. That's it. Advanced Statics program, you have more than a thousand spots available every single year. So the odds are on your side if you have more spots available. Simple like that. So that's the reason number one. The reason number two, I'm going to dive a little bit more into this reason number two because it, it, it's one thing that leads to another one that leads to another one. Um, the, the, the reason number two is because who is applying, if you think about who's applied to advanced standings and who's applied to specialty programs. Advanced standing program, only foreign trained dentists are applying to this program. Only foreign trained dentists. That's it. Grad programs, specialty programs, you have overall a handful of, uh, of foreign trained dentists applying to these programs. And the vast majority of people applying are people that graduated from CODA accredited institutions in the United States or Canada or somewhere else. And again, if you watch my videos, you know what a CODA accredited institution is is you know what that is and you know that all the institutions that go through code accreditation they pass the dental schools in the united states basically they are up to certain standards so when you get bob who graduated from university of michigan mary who graduated from the university of north carolina in chapel hill uh, david who graduated from uh, ucla 
even though these are different schools, they all go through the same code standards. So it's easier to compare these folks. If you have a pool of three, 400 applicants and you have the vast majority of applicants coming from code accredited institutions, it's easier for people to evaluate and compare these candidates. It's just easier compared to like, if they want to compare me, Leo, graduated from Brazil with somebody who graduated from VCU, you know, they know the standards of VCU. My school in Brazil may be the best in the world, but they don't know that. They just don't know, you know, because the schools in Brazil, they don't go through the same criteria. Same thing in other schools around the world. So when you're applying to specialty program, you have the first adva- disadvantage that a lot of the other candidates go through similar, very similar schools that are easier to compare them against each other. Okay. That's the first thing. The second thing, if you never stepped your foot in the U.S., so if you spent very little time, you know very little about the school setting and the cultural school setting in the United States. So that's another disadvantage that you have. Have I seen people getting accepted without a major U.S. background? Yes, I have. I have friends who have been through the process and got into a specialty program without this major uh, American background. But it's not the most common thing to see out there. So you're competing against people that it's easier to compare their background and you're competing competing against people that been through a dental school in the United States and are very familiar with how things are. And then third, some countries around the world will speak English as the first language as well, or maybe as a second language, or maybe they, they speak since a very young age. Brazil is not one of these countries. We speak Portuguese and that's it. So when I came from Brazil, my English wasn't as good as it is today. My English was actually very, very poor. You know, I had to improve a lot to get to the level that I am today. So if you imagine me coming from Brazil, applying to a specialty program, and I have a challenge to communicate in English, that also put me in a situation of disadvantage. So basically, it's easier to compare the other candidates who graduated from similar schools. Second, the cultural dental background, is, it, it could be different for, for many people. And third, the language barrier for some people, not for everybody, but for some people, and I put myself in this example. So I have three things, if I was applying directly to a specialty program, I have three things kind of playing against me, you know, when I apply to a specialty program. Does that mean that this process isn't possible? No, it's not. Dr. Andrew Weisheimer did this. He got into uh, orthodontics. Uh, Dr. Cynthia Junqueira did this. She got into orthodontics. Dr. Anna Hamus got into prosthodontics. There are several people that I know that got into a specialty program without, you know, going through DDS in the United States or best in the United States. But if you ask me which one is easier for you to get accepted, without a doubt, it's going to be the best things, you know. Uh, to get into a specialty program, you're definitely going to have to work a little bit harder and you're going to have to get something that makes you stand out from the crowd so you can become a very, very competitive candidate. There are many things that you can do to achieve that. In my course, I talk about uh, several different things that you can do. But just so you know, you're going to have to work a little bit harder. It is possible. And I believe you can make it. I believe you can make that happen. But you just got to be really, really focused uh, on your path and on your application to set yourself apart from the crowd and get that desired spot. Hope you liked the video. If you have comments, leave it down below. Like, share, share with your friends. And I'm going to be bringing more things to you in the next videos.